Hi all, I'm Dave Downey, welcome to my fly tying channel. Uh, here I'm going to be, well here I tie all my favourite flies uh, and I'm showing you how to tie them with different types of techniques and methods. Uh, the flies that I'm tying, I'll use them all, uh, they catch me fish and they're there for you guys to, 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 to tie them and, and catch some fish as well. Uh, they're not difficult flies, they're bread and butter flies and at the end of each of the video I'll have a wee list of materials required to tie the fly just in case you missed it during the video. There'll also be a wee link to my online shop where you can purchase the flies and the materials required to tie these patterns. So no further ado, I hope you enjoy the video and that you'll pass it on to your pals, your fishing colleagues. Uh, don't be scared to share the video. Uh, Feel free to share it on your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever. Uh, get your fellow anglers to have a wee look at it as well. Also, just enjoy the video at the end of the day. So, today I'm going to be tying a little buzzer. It's, uh, it's a sort of variation of a Blakestone buzzer. You could actually stop tying it at the end uh, and not do what I'm going to do and use it as a buzzer buzzer. Or you can do what I'm going to do and finish it off. So, I'll get on with it, I'll stop talking uh, and let you see how, how I tie it. Now, in the vise I've got a size 10 barbless hook. They are my own hooks. Uh, that is a size 10. It's quite a big hook, but they're really, really good. And I do like bronze curved hooks. We're going to need some curved hooks. So you could use a B110, you could use a fulling mill equivalent. You know, just whatever your favourite curved grub hook is. We're going to need some mirage, right? So that's some large mirage. We're going to need that. We're going to need some fire orange goose bites. Okay, we're going to need some goose bites for that. You'll see me looking about, it's because I've got cameras everywhere. I need to kind of set the cameras up the way I want them set up. What we're going to be using for the fly is we're going to be using some yellow owl. Now, obviously, you can use whatever colour a peacock eye that you want, but I, I'm going to strip it. And then lastly, we're going to need some uh, a decent quality hen cape. Now, I do prefer a natural hen cape. This is a Mets one. I do prefer natural black. Obviously, if you're tying different colour uh, buzzers, you use a different colour of hackle. And there is one other thing. It's just the black thread. Now, you're going to use a thread. I, do, I don't actually do touch and turns with the, the strip quill. What I tend to do is I, I will... Uh, space it out and use the thread to make make the black band look wider. So let's get the thread started. Okay. Right, that's kinda I don't mind a gap now and again but if it's too big a gap I don't really like that. I, you know because I'm going to cover it all up eventually anyway. So now we've come down past the bend. All we want to do is take that little excess off. Okay, then we're going to go back up. Now this is a personal preference depending how much of a thick body and how tapered you want it. It's really your own choice. I don't want it too thick and I don't want it too thin. So I'll probably get them down three times. But it's quite a thin thread. If I was going to do this for bulk because of the way I tie them, I tend to do the body first then I varnish the body. I would use a thicker thread. And then obviously when I'm doing the more intricate work at the thorax, uh, I would I would use a thinner thread, so I would do maybe a dozen of these at a time. So I'll go back down. Now, as I say, that's my favourite type of rubber. It's a Stadler one, right? So I just Stadler rubber does the job. I've already pre-stripped this quill. As you can see, it's nice colour. So I'm just going to catch it in. So I'll just catch that in, and then we'll tie down. Now I've already went up and down two, three times, so I'm not wanting to do too many more. So I want to cover that quill up. So we'll just go over it. Don't worry too much about the bottom end, right? So obviously I don't want lumps like that. So I'm going to cut that, cover that up again. So back up. And back down. Okay, then back up. Oh, and then we caught the hook. That does happen on a regular basis when you catch the the bend of the hook. 
as I say, it's up to yourself how thick or how thin you want it. You will know what looks better for you. Some guys like really, really thick buzzers. Some guys like really, really thin ones. Obviously, the thicker you make it there, the less you're going to get with this, because it's going to be a bigger circumference as you're winding it round. So we're going to take the strip quill, and as I say, not touching turns. Yeah, that one slipped a wee bit, and I didn't want that, so just take it back off. I want to try and keep it kind of even. Going up there. And what it does is it makes the band look bigger than what it is, so it's like a bit of cheating, to be quite honest. Because there is a little black band goes down the strip quill. So we just want to tie that off. And pull that back. Trim it off. Now, as I said, at this point, I will... I will do like a dozen of these and then I'll either use the resin or I'll use varnish. I prefer to use varnish on them. I think varnish is better. So I've already done one that I've varnished so I'll move that to the side. We'll bring the varnished one in. So it looks a bit shinier. It also adds strength. So you want strength on a strip quill because you don't want it getting ripped apart. You maybe put two coats of varnish you can build the body up using the varnish as well. So we'll go back in with a thinner thread. Obviously I'd have used a thicker one as explained earlier. Then what we want to do is we want to get the UTC Mirage. Now on a size 10 I'm using the large. Obviously on a 12 or 14 I would be using the medium. And then on a... I don't know if I'd want to tie these down to a 16. I'm not saying they won't work but it's kind of fiddly. Especially some of the 16s that are out there. So we'll just catch that in. Uh, we'll go back up and down a couple of times. Now we don't have, it's not like we're tying a, a thread type buzzer. So we don't have to build that up. You know, we're going to use dubbing. That, that was the other thing I meant to show you actually. We are going to use a dubbing. We're going to use Cybia, and it's a dark peacock, uh, fine diamond dubbing. That is going to be the thorax. I knew there was something else I had to tell you. Getting old. I was 50 this year. Right, catch that in. Catch the other side in. So that's a buy it on either side. Right, so I'll just catch two of them in. That like says we don't have to bulk that up at all because we are going to use the dubbing. So now we want to get the dubbing. I showed you this tip before in my previous videos, but I'll just regurgitate it. Cut the corner of the bag off and then you can just pull a bit of dubbing out at a time. You know, you don't have to have it all over the place. So we do want a half decent amount of dubbing because we are using that to bulk the thorax up a little bit. So we'll go with that amount just now, right? And we'll see how that goes. If it doesn't, if it's not enough then. So always working it back so you're getting that sort of ball shape, right? So it is a bit like a really old buzzer. You know, like the old ones with the peacock uh, hero. And we'll catch that in. Just pull it back, it should break. Same with that one. Catch that in, pull it back. Right, now I'm going to do a, my usual, a wee two turn whip finish, just so that if it came loose, at this point I wouldn't lose the bias. So we've got the bias in there. So it's looking good already. I mean that's almost a you know, as I says, you don't have to do what I'm going to do with the hackle. So I'll just bring over the the mirage over the top. Trim that off. Push that forward and then just tidy it up a little bit. So that says you could just easily finish that now and that's a cracking buzzer. I mean, if you look at it, as I say, because I've got the two cameras running, I, I do tend to look. I need to move the other uh, monitor that I've got my main camera on so that I can actually look at everything. Now, I'm not ignoring these, right? The camera I'm looking at for my face shots is that one, and this one over here uh, is the other one. So, okay, now we've got our black hen hackle, it's important. The hen hackle's got more life in it, it's softer, but it is a genetic one, so I'm just going to move that hook up a little bit. 
and I've just pulled that out so I'll just take off the three or four turns that you just put on and we will catch it back in again okay and then we don't need a lot two turns or one and a half is enough sufficient and just pull the hackle off then just go back to the front it's almost like an Irish duck fly as well but it really is just a wee Blakeston buzzer with a hackle on it and we've been using it for years and we've used it on for wild browns and it's always been a decent fly on Loch Leven as well and what finish two bit finishes trim and just a bit of varnish and that is a pulling fly so I would have that on my droppers or maybe even just I have fished it on Loch Leven with, with a, a muddler on a top dropper and two of these behind it pulling it in a big wave and that's that, it's a little strip called duck fly that basically will work anywhere but as a it's a sort of Blakeston buzzer variation type thing but you can see it doesn't need the hackle, you could use it without the hackle, but I do like it with the hackle. And you can use red game, you can use grizzle hackles, there's no stopping you to the variations. But that is my favourite one, that and the lime green one. Because when the, the fish are on the lime green buzzers at Loch even if you're not wanting to sit and twiddle, you can pull these things. You know, and, and, and the buzzers are fast, if you've ever seen a buzzer underwater, they are fast. So, you know, it's really up to yourself. So, I hope you, you enjoyed watching it. I hope you're going to tie it up and use it. Come back to me and let. I really want people to come back to me and tell me if they're catching on these patterns. Uh, I also want suggestions. And as I said, don't be scared to share the patterns. Uh, don't be scared to to, to share the, the the YouTube video on your Facebook or whatever. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching another one of my video productions. You now get to see my ugly mug in them. Uh, and also you can follow me on Instagram which is Dave Downey Fly Fishing my Facebook's David C Downey uh, and you've got my YouTube uh, and you can go and check out my website if you want to look for materials or you're looking for flies or you're looking for guiding www.fly-fishingworld.com so thanks again for watching stay safe and enjoy your fishing bye for now